Hey church family, it's Cody. Uh, last week we had a couple questions about what exactly the prayer and the care at SilentFirstBaptist.org email addresses were. All those are is a chance for you if you have prayer requests or if you have anything that you need uh, to go ahead and email. If you have prayer requests, come on over to uh, to do the prayer at SilentFirstBaptist.org and if you have anything you need, just email uh, care at SilentFirstBaptist.org just like you're emailing anyone else and that way we as staff can go ahead and take care of you. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you guys soon. We are so excited to see you here this morning, um, wherever you're tuning in, if you are laying down, sitting down, chilling with your family by yourself, we just want to welcome you here um, with us this morning. So um, we're just going to, we're just going to worship. So uh, I was talking to someone uh, from the congregation and they're like, it's weird to kind of stand and worship. Um, but if that's what you want to do and you want to stand and worship, please do. If you want to sit and worship, if you don't want to sing, if you want to sing, just, just in your heart, make this a time where you can just truly open yourself up. God through through this time of worship. So if you'll just join us as we sing, um, that's what it's all about. So let's worship together. Our Father, our Father, everlasting, the old creation. God Almighty, through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior, I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection when we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I just. Suffered and crucified Forgiveness is in you He sent it into darkness You rose in glorious light Never seated high I believe 
believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection. That we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Oh 
from the ashes of the feet the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of the feet the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me unsure of why or what or because why are things happening around us God we just confidently come to you this morning God surprisingly not not begging for answers God my prayers that we're coming just because we want to be close to you God we're coming because we so desperately just need to be with you so God whoever's seeing this whoever's entering into this moment with you God I just pray a prayer prayer of peace God a prayer of comfort God a prayer of of courage prayer of love God we we love you (laughs) and you know exactly where we are you know exactly what's going on in our heads so God we just we come to you we love you We thank you, God. All things, always, all the time, God, we thank you. Grace that flows like a river washing over me. Fount of heaven
open my eyes. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You entered my heart. You set me apart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You give me life. You open my eyes. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You entered my heart. You set me apart. I love you, Lord. I love. God, like I prayed many times, God, we, we thank you in the valley. God, we thank you when we're on the mountain. God, we just, we thank you. Because it's not about our situation, God. It's not about how we feel or what we think, God. It's about the fact, God, that you are always good, that you're always watching out for us, even when it's hard. So, God, we just, we, we purely thank you. We worship you. We love you. We give you this. God, in all your people lives said, Amen. He's good. Amen. Um, so during this time, we're, we're going to continue worship. If you, if you were with us um, last week on the live stream, um, this, this instructional video that's about to pop up will look similar. Um, it's just a reminder that uh, there, there are many ways, many ways to give. Um, it's just our way of saying, you know what, God, we trust you with everything. We trust you with every part of me, my time, my talents, and financially, we, we trust you. Um, so as we give, we give faithfully this Sunday of, um, as this video comes up. Is, this is just a way that you can give um, while we're not actually physically meeting um, in the church. Um, so if you go to our website here, summerfirstbaptist.org, um, uh, you click give right here in uh, the right hand corner. Um, you will see um, that, yeah, you can just click that button. It'll take you to this page and you can give reoccurringly. You can give one time. Um, whatever whatever you want to do um, between you and God, we just, we'd just we love for you to be able to give this way. So please take advantage of that. Um, during this time, I'm just going to say a prayer um, over the offering. So God, we just, we, we just in awe of who you are. God, because as we give to you, we know, God, that you give back even more. So God, this morning we give faithfully to you. God, knowing that we're not, we're not, we're not giving to someone first Baptist, God, but we're giving to a vessel, God, that is built, God, to serve you. God, a vessel that is, that is made to reach this community, God, to spread your light. Through all the darkness, God, that, that's why we give. God, so bless this offering. Make it good like you always do. So we can continue this mission, this vision, God, to spread your name. We love you. We thank you in your name. Amen. Well, good morning, Selma First family. It is awesome to be together. I know. It's weird. You're there. I'm here. But we're all together, friends. We are together right now, virtually. And uh, we get to worship him and praise him and thank him. And we get to lift other people to his doorstep together as family, as family. But this is weird, isn't it? It is weird. It's a weird situation. 
um, being being kind of shut down. It's a weird thing for you and me. And I've mentioned this before. We're social people. God created us really to be in community. And so this feels weird for us. But but man, God has given us technology. We do have technology at our fingertips so we can reach out, right? We can continue to reach out and uh, and be there for uh, for others. We have the opportunity to actually be his hands and feet during this time. How are you doing with that? I know I challenged us last week to, to be his hands and feet, to reach out, to connect with people, to call folks. How are you doing with that? I know I'm doing pretty well myself and and I've heard from some of you, you, you guys are doing pretty well. But uh, we need to keep it up. We need to keep it up. We need to be his hands and feet together, you know, especially now, especially during this pandemic time. You know, we, we've been talking, appropriately so, about prayer and how important prayer really is. And the fact that prayer is just reaching out and talking to our Lord, conversating, right? Conversating having that relationship with him on an ongoing basis. And so we, uh, we've we been in this sermon series called Pray, Dare to Conversate. And, and I've been asking us to be praying, dare to have conversation with God. Dare to pray and to talk about dangerous things, like God, please use me. We've been talking about what it means to keep our focus on him, to stay front and center with him, where he brings us to a place of feeling humble and being able to just put our, our hands out, our arms out, and just say, Lord, here am I. Send me. Friends, prayer is the key, you know? Prayer is the key. As we finish our series, our series on prayer, because um, we're going we're gonna to finish it out this week, for now, for now. Of course, we will revisit prayer as we go on through the, through the year, but we're going to finish it out. And as we do that this time, I, I, I want to bring us to a place, you know, where we're, where we're living right now, where we're actually standing and sitting um, right now. And that place, friends, is that our conversational needs, our, our conversing, our, our prayer needs, friends, we need to move it just a little bit further. It can't now be just about us. It can't be about what I need anymore. It can't be about what I need to have having to do with my situation or even my own thanksgivings. It can't be about that anymore. Friends, our conversations and our conversing with God, it, it really should also, and and very importantly be about others. About being able to not just pray with others, but for others. Being able to bring them to the doorstep of God. And that's real important, you know. That's an important thing that we, we practice doing that. That's called, that's called intercessory. That's an interesting term, intercessory prayer. Now, let me tell you, intercessory, that's just a big fancy word, man. It means intervening for somebody in prayer. And as I've been saying, it, it is bringing them to God's doorstep, actually bringing them to his door. You are actually, you are actually intervening on behalf of someone in prayer. You know, I had a rabbi when I was growing up, and his name was Rabbi Horn. And, and he had a, a very interesting way of seeing prayer and seeing God. In fact, in fact, he, he said that he referred to prayer as being the doorway to God. You know? Isn't that interesting? That prayer is a doorway to God. That prayer itself was a doorway. And then going through that door, man, it brought you to God's door. I just thought that was really kind of cool, you know. Back when I was in 10th grade, I remember I, I pretty much fancied myself like, like a writer. I really enjoyed writing. I would write short stories and I would write articles. I, uh, I kept a journal, still do. Uh, wrote poetry. Oh, man, I, I wrote all kinds of poetry. And I would do this thing. See, I, I always thought I was real creative. I used to like to take these words and situations and kind of melt them together and come up with something that would be a, 
I don't know, uh, shocking, you know, uh, different, where people would read it and go, whoa, that's deep, you know. That's, that's what I kind of, I kind of, kind of prided myself on that. This one time I, I wrote a poem and I called it Time. And in it, I used the clock as a metaphor for life, you know, for in general, just, just life, living. And, and I decided that I would end the poem like, like really cool, maybe a little dark. So, uh, so I, so I said something about, and then the clock stops. Ooh. Right? Right? Deep. Deep and dark. And I don't know. I was, I thought it was cool. And I just thought that I would do that. And, uh, and I really liked it. I thought that it came out really good. Well, you know who else was pretty interested on how that poem came out? My mom. Yeah. One afternoon, she was going through my room, and she saw the poem just sitting on my desk, and she starts reading it, and I think it freaked her out just a little bit. And she, uh, she saw me a little later on that day, and uh, she, she said, hey, I really liked your poem about time. It was really good, very creative. Little, ooh, I didn't know it was a little twist. It was, it was really, you know, I liked it so much that I called your rabbi. Here we go, right? I called the rabbi. I made an appointment for you on Tuesday, just because I think it's so good and he'll like it. Yeah, I wasn't being fooled. I knew better. My mom was freaked out. That kind of freaked her out a little bit. But that was okay. I played along, and I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, I'd like to go talk to someone about my writing. You know, so that Tuesday came along, and it was it was right before Hebrew school, and I came in, and the rabbi said, hey, come on in. And I sat down with him, and we started to talk, and I started to explain to him my writing, and he did ask me about the poem, and and I just said, I'm just putting creative things together and, and, and trying to make a twist and just get deep. And, um, and, and then it only took a few more minutes for me to convince him that I wasn't going to hurt myself or anyone else. And uh, he, was, he was satisfied, and he said, oh, okay, that's good. He says, well, by the way, since I've got you here, I've got a question for you. He goes, I've been noticing something about you lately. I was like, oh, really? What's, what's that? He said, well, I've noticed that, you know, uh, in break times at Hebrew school, uh, you'll, you'll go out uh, you know, onto the campus, into the, into the courtyard, and, and you'll be with your friends for a little bit, but then you'll step away and, and you'll take time for yourself. And you do that a lot. And it looks to me, I don't know, but it looks to me like you're praying. And I was like, well, yeah. Yeah, I, I, sure. I said, I pray all the time. He says, about what? He goes, are, are, you, are you in a spot? Are, are you frustrated? Are things going weird? Are you, are you in a crisis right now? And what's, I said, no. I said, no. I said, I said the way I see it is I, I'm talking to God all the time. I, God is my friend, and I have to be conversing with him on a regular basis. And so that's... That's what I'm doing. When you see me stopping and moving aside and sitting down and talking to him, man, I'm just, I'm just bringing him up to speed on what I was just thinking or what was going on in my day. And he goes, ah, you figured it out. You figured it out. He goes, you figured out the secret. That it's actually about going through the doorway and taking the doorway to God by stepping through a doorway of prayer. I said, yeah. I'd never thought of it that way until that moment. I said, yeah, that makes sense. He said, so let me ask you this. When you go through that doorway of prayer, do you bring anyone with you? Wow. See, I'd never thought of it that way. That kind of blew my hair back. I was kind of surprised that he actually went in that direction. Do I bring anyone with me when I go through that doorway, when I go to the, the doorway of prayer? Man. See, praying for others, friends, it's not something that we, we necessarily think of in that way. We don't necessarily think about when we are praying for them. We're actually taking them by the hand and bringing them 
to the threshold of the door of the dwelling of our Lord. We don't think of it that way. And, and when we do pray for people, I, and, and we are actually bringing them, I, it just doesn't come to mind, I think. Today we're going to talk about why that is, and why we need to be aware of it. And, and, and why when we open the door of prayer, friends, we, we need, we need to bring people with us. Let me show you what I mean. Go ahead and open up your Bibles. I know that you got them with you. I'd have you raise them and stuff, but that would be silly because I can't see you anyway. Um, but, but I'm glad you have them. Turn on your devices and, um, and go ahead and open them up. Today, uh, we're going to be in the, the book of 1 Timothy. Uh, turn to 1 Timothy. We'll be in, um, in chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 8. So go ahead and find it. Uh, once you find it, uh, go ahead and go ahead and put your finger in it, and we're gonna we're gonna go through it together. But, but while you're looking, let me tell you about this. This is a letter that was written by the Apostle Paul. So it, it, it was it was actually written to a young co-worker of his who was working with the the people of the Church of Ephesus at the time. His name was Timothy. And, and, and Paul, the Apostle Paul, was taking it upon himself to actually be a mentor to Timothy. And so he wrote this letter to him to actually help him out while he was with the people of Ephesus. It's centered on God's doctrine and, and centered on godliness. And, and so in our portion of Scripture this morning, I love that Paul hits upon a section that the Bible actually um, describes as instructions about worship, right? You look in your Bible, it says instructions about worship. Well, it's very interesting to me that in this section of instruction about worship, the very first thing that he talks about, friends, is prayer. Isn't that interesting? That's the very first thing that he brings up is about prayer, about walking through the door of prayer and not by himself, not by ourselves, but bringing others with us. Let's take a look at it. Let me show you what I mean. Go ahead and open it up. And um, this, is, this is where we begin right here at verse 1. The Apostle Paul writes this. He says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peacefully and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. For there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is the message God gave to the world at just the right time. And I have been chosen as a preacher and an apostle to teach the Gentiles this message about faith and truth. I'm not exaggerating. I'm just telling the truth. In every place of worship, I want men to pray with holy hands, lifted up to God, free from anger, and controversy. Wow. Amen, right? I love this piece of scripture, friends. I, I, I absolutely love this, you know. Right off the bat, what does Paul say? He says, first thing, right? First thing. He says, first thing first. We have got to pray and pray for everyone. Isn't that interesting? It's the very first thing that he says. So I want to be able to say it to you, like Paul did. First things first, friends. First things first. Pray for everyone. Pray for everyone. Bring everyone around you that you are connected with, that is in your sphere of influence, to the doorstep of God. Bring everyone, right? Why? Because the truth is, friends, to pray is to care. And that's the truth of it. To actually pray is to care for others. That's important. That's what we see in our scripture today. 
See, I'm, I'm sure that many of us, if not all of us, you know, um, especially right now, while the world is wrestling with the COVID-19, I believe that, that many of us, if not all of us, are thinking of others. And, I, and I'm going to tell you something. My mind, my mind wanders to um, and, and, and actually wrestles for, with, with, with what others in the world are going on or, or are dealing with right now. I, my, my, I wrestle with how others, the nation, are dealing with this. The people in our community are dealing with this. Man, I think about the people down the street from me, about what's going on for them. And I begin to lift them up in prayer because they're stressed out about this, this situation, and I know they are. If we are even somewhat stressed, friends, just somewhat stressed, we know that others that are really struggling with this virus, they're super stressed. I begin to wrestle with those folks who are really struggling with, with trying to beat the virus personally. I, I find myself praying for those people who, who, who are fighting the virus in their bodies I find myself praying for those people who've lost friends and relatives right now to, to the virus, and not just here, not just, not just here, but abroad as well. See, when Paul talks about prayer, friends, he, he, he says, you need to be praying for everyone. Now, I've got to tell you something. When I pray like that, when I think about other people that are really, in a bad way right now. Friends, I feel so puny. I feel inadequate. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like when you're praying for someone or, or something especially now that you just feel like it's just, man, you're too small to be able to do anything with that? Well, these concerns, friends, these concerns and concerns like them, this is what Paul is talking about. That's why he says, first of all, because that's the first call, friends. That's the first call to the door of prayer. That's the first call. I like how Richard Foster says it. Richard Foster says this. He says, if we truly love people, we will desire for them far more than it is within our power to give them, and this will lead us to prayer. Wow, that's an interesting quote, right? Those are some interesting words. Remember what we read. No. Remember what we read in verses 1 through 4. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good. It pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. Friends, just these words are about care and concern and love and being others-focused. Just these words are about that so that we can actually emulate the one who did it first and did it best our Lord Jesus. And he did it, friends, so that we could have salvation and we could have truth. In, all, in, in, in two of the Gospels, friends, in the Gospel of, of Matthew and Luke, there's a, there's a tender story that, um, that is told. And it's about this, this dad. You know, there's, a, there's this father who brings his epileptic son to Jesus, who is teaching. Now, this, this poor kid, he has been struggling with epilepsy uh, for his whole life. And, and the dad brings his son to the crowd, to the, to the gathering. And he talks to the apostles, I mean, the disciples, and, and they can't do anything. They're not able to help him. So he, he goes then to Jesus, right? And even though he's feeling really downcast and, and downhearted, and he's not feeling very optimistic. He still goes to Jesus. And what does he say? He says, you know, if you can do anything, please take pity on us. Take pity on us and help us. Wow. 
Now, that's an interesting prayer, isn't it? That's an interesting conversative moment. That prayer, friends, it was it was probably more meek than mighty. It was it was it was more timid than towering. And quite honestly, it contained absolutely no pretense whatsoever. There was no boasting. <laughs> and actually, uh, to be honest, there wasn't a whole lot of maybe belief or faith in it either. But Jesus heard it. And, and he responded immediately. And he, he heals the boy. See, the power of prayer, friends, the power in the prayer is actually in the one who hears it. Not in the one that says it. That's important for us to understand. Because when it comes right down to it, prayer is all about being able to care. It's care for others when we pray. When we go through that door of prayer. But there's another piece. There's another piece to this. And I want to make sure we get this. It's another piece. When we are interceding for others, when we are bringing them through the door of prayer, what we need to know is that when we are praying and interceding, we are actually cooperating with Jesus. That's absolutely right. We are, we are cooperating with Jesus. To go through the door of prayer is to cooperate with Christ. See, when, when, when we are standing in the gap, when we're standing right in the gap in a time of need on behalf of other folks who are really struggling, man, that's when we're caring for them. But at the very same time, friends, while we're doing that, Christ is doing something as well. In fact, he is the ultimate intercessor. And he is in the midst of, of when we are caring for others. We are cooperating. We cooperate with, with Christ when we pray this way, when we intercess. That's what's happening. Christ is a living bridge, isn't he? He's actually the living bridge for us between humanity and God. Jesus is the great mediator. He's God. Come to our side. That's who Jesus is. He, he, he unites us forever with humanity so that we can speak to him from our humanity and then be heard. We unite with him, and he unites with us. And he unites with us with his divinity. Pretty amazing stuff, you know? Pretty amazing stuff. That's how we get to the finish. That's how we persevere. That's how we move forward, by cooperating with him. It, 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 it's, it's, it is God made present in the midst of trouble, you know? I don't know if you remember this, but um, the 1992 Olympics, you know, they were in Barcelona. And I remember watching these Olympics. I really like the, the track events. And, and you, might, you might remember a 26-year-old young man named Derek Redman. Now, Derek, he, uh, he was an amazing runner. His, his big event was the 400-meter race. Well, he was favored to win on this particular day. So halfway through this heat that he was in, this semi-final semi heat, um, he, he ended up uh, tearing right, right through a hamstring in his leg. And it was so painful that it completely and totally wrapped his body and he crumbled to the ground. Right there in the middle of the race. Everyone took off and poor Derek Redmond, who, who was actually favored to win, was now on the ground screaming. And, and he, he struggled to push himself up, to get back up onto his feet. And once he did, he was, he was hopping and hobbling. And he, he took a couple steps as if he was going to continue the race with sweat and tears and exhaustion. And all of a sudden, there's this big man, and he's muscling his way through the crowd, coming down out of the stands. Um, and he's wearing this T-shirt that says, have you hugged your kid yet today? And, and it was his dad, Jim, Jim Redman. And he jumped out onto the track where his son was 
was just standing and hunched over. And he said, son, it's okay. You, you don't need to do this. It's good. He said, no, dad, I, I do. I have to. So his dad, Jimmy, he put his arm around his son and he said, fine, then we're going to do it together. And they both started to walk and he helped them all the way down the way and they, they, they crossed the finish line together. Together. What an amazing image that is, friends. If you got to see it with your own eyes, I, it, it brought me to tears. I remember when I was watching this whole drama play out. And as I think about that story, friends, it reminds me that to pray, to pray is to bring our Heavenly Father out of the stands, out onto the track with us, where He comes up alongside and puts His arm around us and allows us to lean on Him as He says, we're going to do this together. We're going to go to the finish together. Let him be your friend. Will you let him help you? Will you let him walk alongside you? Will you let him cooperate with you who are cooperating with him? In this pandemic right now, this pandemic that we're, we're all walking through, that we're just trying to, to wrap our puny little brains around. What we have to remember, friends, is this is, this is not an unbreachable blockade. This isn't something that's going to keep us from getting where God wants us to get to. You know? It's not a stoppage. It's just not. Actually, if anything, it's a reminder for you and me. It's, it's a reminder that if, if and how and when we keep the faith and keep our belief, we're going to finish the race. And we're going to finish the race with him. Because that's his desire, friends, isn't it? That's God's desire for you and me. To actually finish, finish the race. See, to pray, friends, to pray is not to convince God of our will, but actually to find the strength to do his. That's the cooperation. To pray is to cooperate with Christ, friends. But then at the same time, doesn't it make sense that, that, that going through the door of prayer is also then about practicing complete surrender? Complete surrender. Going through the door of prayer, man, complete surrender. When we were looking at verse 8, if you remember, this is what 8 said. Pray with what? With holy hands. Lifted to God, free from what? Anger and controversy. All of the nonsense wiped aside. It's not about any of our drama anymore, friends. It's, it's all about raising our hands and coming to him and completely surrendering. Surrendering all. When we're going to walk through that, that door of prayer, it's about surrendering. It's about giving it up. Henry Nowen, he's a, he's a, a priest and a, a theologian and a speaker and a professor. Um, Henry Nowen, he says this. I like, I like how he puts it. He says, we come to God tightly with tightly clenched fists. So prayer at first is painful. Because we discover that we do not want to let go of the things that hold us and bind us. Friends, the truth is, in our humanness, man, we want to box it out, don't we? We want to box it out with God. We want to ask questions. I mean, we, we get, we, all these questions seem to just come to us, you know? Uh, for instance, one of the questions that maybe we even say out loud is, if you are the almighty God, then why is all of this happening? Or we ask a question like this. If you want good for us, then why is there so much bad? Or how about this one? 
Sometimes we might say, if he came to save the world, then why is it that it's not saved yet? How about those? See, yeah, we probably don't say them out loud because we don't want to get embarrassed. But man, sometimes those things pop up in our brain. That doubt seems to pop up for us. I think what happens in those moments, friends, is that we end up reducing God to, to, a, to a whole list of our own expectations and our own perceptions. And, and when we do that, friends, then that gives us the opportunity to shake our fist at him. Because he didn't live up to our perceptions and our wants and our desires and our expectations. Friends, that's why... That's why we pray this prayer. And you've probably prayed it yourself, right? You've probably prayed this too. God, please help me with my unbelief. Have you been there? I have. God, please help me with my faith right now. Help me with my doubt right now. That's why we pray that prayer, friends. Pain, suffering, and and fear, friends, they're going to continue to be problems for us. They will be problems. And we're, we're seeing it right now. The truth is we're, we, we see some of that right now in, in, in the pandemic situation that we're all living through right now. We, we seem to see this, right? The questions actually leave us with clenched fists, you know? And i got to tell you something. Clenching hurts. We get those little marks on our palms from our nails. We clench so hard. And really, that's because we don't want to part with something, right? And maybe it is our fear. And maybe it is our doubt. And it's not that we want to be fearful or we want to doubt God, but man, we're comfortable with it because we understand it. And it's hard to let it go. It's the same thing with our material stuff. We, we, we cling to that too, don't we? Because we're afraid what's going to happen if we let it go. And so, and so we clench. We, we, we grab hold of it, you know. That hurt and that sorrow, we've grown accustomed to it. And so we don't want to let that go. That's hard, man. And I'll tell you why. Because you can't enter, enter a door. A door that may be pretty narrow with balled up fists. We've got to open them up. We've got to open up our hands. We've got to open up our hearts. If we are expecting to go through the door of prayer with balled up fists, then friends, how can we even expect to bring someone with us? We can't hold anyone's hands like this. To pray is to open our hands, friends. To pray is to open our hearts. To pray is to open ourselves up to God's plans, to God's promises, to his truth. It's about walking through the door of prayer and bringing others with us. Remember, remember this. Remember that we're not alone. He will not leave us nor forsake us. He will be with us to the very end of time. Friends, when you pass through the water and the rain is coming down, he will be with you and he will not allow the river, river to sweep you away. He will be with you at all times. He is the Lord your God, the one and only God, the God of Israel. He is your Father in heaven. And he will be with you. And he will have your arm, his arm around you as he walks you to the finish line. This is why we're told in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, catch this, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. And he will make your paths straight. Amen, right? Amen. That's so important for us to understand. We need to open our hands to our own weaknesses, to our own chaos, 
And in doing so, now we can care for others. We can cooperate with Christ. We can completely surrender to him in all things and in all ways. Prayer, friends, is not a magic means by which we control God so that we can get what we think we need. But it's a humble means. It's a humble means by which God can release his power and release his promises on you and me and through us to others. This week, I just, I want you to please remember, please remember and practice to reach out to all of those around you. Remember, we talked about this last week. Remember to continue doing this. Reach out. Check on people. Talk to people. Conversate with people, for people. And bring them by their hand to the doorstep of God. I want you to practice that this week, friends. Practice reaching out. Practice being there. Use the technology that you have to be connected. We are the church. We are the church. Not the building, not the house that you're in. You and me, we are his people. There to conversate and bring people with you. Bring them with you. Amen? Friends, let's do that together. Yeah? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you, God. You are the author of everything. Lord, you know the beginnings and you know all of the endings. You know what the starting line looks like and you know what the finish line looks like. And here we are, Lord, in the middle trying to figure out how not to stumble over fear, how not to stumble over pride, how not to stumble over the unknown. And then here you are, Lord God. You come right out into the middle of everything. You come right out of the stands and you put your arms around us and you tell us, you have this. God, help us to pray. Help us to come to you. Help us to conversate with you. But Lord God, I would ask that you cause us to pray for others, to pray with others, to bring others by the hand through that door of prayer to your doorstep and present them to you. Lord God, use us. Like Isaiah, we stand on the cliff that is yours and we say, here am I, Lord. Send me. Send us. We praise you, God, because you have us covered, because you have us protected, because you are blessing us, because you love us. And especially during this time of uncertainty, we thank you, God, for being who you are. Praise you and we thank you, Lord. We lift this to you right now. In the amazing, holy name of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. God bless you. Have an awesome Sunday and an amazing week. And I'll see you again, probably the middle of this week. We'll, we'll talk again. God bless you.